welcome or welcome back to my channel, Our Gifted Garden. My name is Regina and in this video we are going to do some work in the garden. First up, we're going to get some harvesting done. I have lots of okra to harvest, lots of peppers, a few green beans, things like that that I've kind of been neglecting because I haven't been feeling well. So I haven't been spending as much time in the garden. So I want to catch up on all of that. And as a matter of fact, I actually started this work yesterday. Um, so I'll start by showing you guys that. I did the har a lot of the harvesting yesterday. Um, this took two days because I can't get out into the garden until 7 p.m. because it's just too hot. Now it's 7, I just checked, and it's 101 degrees at 7. It's, it got up to about 105 today. Um, remember, I am gardening in North Texas, zone 8A. So we're used to the heat, but it's been a, it's been a weirdly hot summer. <laughs> really hot early summer um, so it's still over 100 degrees hopefully my camera can take it but it is overcast the Sun has gone behind my house so now it's not too bright in my yard so I can actually be out here comfortably well as comfortable as you can be when it's 101 degrees out right but before I do go ahead and like this video you can like it now or you can wait until you get to that moment where you're like, okay, I really like this. But, or you could just like it now and you could trust me, take my word for it. Um, and then, of course, if you're interested in gardening content um, like this, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You won't be disappointed. Lots of gardening content um, coming your way. And, of course, click the notification bell to be notified of each time I post a video. Y'all, this heat is getting to my brain. <laughs> I feel like I can't even talk. All right. So first, let's take a look at that harvest. So my okra has definitely grown from the from when I did my okra video. I don't have to get down on my knees to harvest it anymore, which is nice. So now I can harvest my okra standing. Yeah, there's lots of like gnats, flies out here. All right, so okra is harvested. Look at that, y'all. I have 24 plants, if I remember right. Maybe, yeah, I think I have about 24 plants and that's what I've harvested today. Hopefully most of these aren't too hard. Most of them actually feel okay. So I think they'll actually be all right. All right, so now I'm gonna harvest some peppers from this bed behind me, the bed where I'm growing also my berries. I've also seen birds around and it looks like some of my berries have some bird damage. So I'm gonna have to get some type of netting or something to cover my blackberries. It's kind of like the first round I got to have those maybe because they didn't know they were there. Now the birds have figured out that I have berries and they've told their friends. I mean, one landed on my little trellis wire two minutes ago. So I'm gonna have to be, figure out a way to cover those up and also my muscadines when they start ripening because they are not for the birds. The birds can come here and eat all the insects they want, but they cannot have my berries. So I'm going to harvest some peppers from this bed. Actually, I have two pepper plants in here. And I'm also going to harvest some parsley. My indoor, my little parsley shaker for dehydrated parsley is actually completely empty. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest some to dehydrate because I have so much. Now, generally when I'm cooking um, during the summer, I just come out here and get fresh parsley. But I want to make sure I get that filled up too so when it's winter I'm not like at the last minute trying to dehydrate all my herbs. I like to do those little by little. So I'm going to harvest some parsley to dehydrate today. Look at that. This is my orange juice sweet pepper. So pretty. These are deliciously sweet. I think I have a few more on the other side as well. But I'm going to go ahead and grab this parsley while I'm here. Ah, 
beautiful. And herbs grow like grass, so I just harvest a whole bunch of them and then they'll grow right back. So now I'm gonna harvest the peppers over here. These aren't orange yet. I thought I had an orange one in here. It's not. I'm gonna leave these and let these turn. So now I'm gonna harvest some of these long beans. Two red ones. So, something I'm noticing is that ants are all over these plants here. And I actually bought a specific organic pesticide, um, Spinosad, that is supposed to be effective on ants. So I am going to try that out on them um, over the next couple days just to see. Now, whenever you see ants, it is important to watch for aphids because often ants will farm aphids. They like that like sweet secretion that the aphids pull off. Um, so you have to watch for those. I don't see any aphids, but I do see ants, which are kind of everywhere, but I'm going to try to get rid of them because they're climbing all over my beans and stuff, and I really, really don't like beans. I like them almost as little as I like grasshoppers. But. Okay, I have lots of peppers to harvest, and you probably won't hear the kids because they are playing in the pool. That's, you know, about 20 feet away over there, so you'll probably hear them having fun, living their best kid lives, but I'm gonna harvest some peppers. Also, I always find grasshoppers in this bed, y'all, and I do not like grasshoppers. They freak me out. So, you might get to see me jump and scream. Hopefully not, but yeah, there's also that. <laughs> So these are Durango chili peppers. They actually, here I'll show you a red one. They actually turned red. There you go. And I made salsa with these just yesterday and they are not that hot. Very annoying. So here's one of the peppers. Whoa. Oh. So here's one of the Durango chili peppers here. These are just medium. They're not really hot at all. I put two of these large ones in my salsa and it was not hot at all. The kids ate it. <laughs> um, but fun fact about peppers, if you're not used to growing them, what peppers often do, they put out their flowers. They don't often put out flowers like continuously. They usually will put out like a flush of flowers and then you get a whole bunch of fruit and then they'll put out another flush of flowers. So that's why if you're wondering, okay, hey, my peppers don't have any flowers on them, you might just be waiting for that second um, flush of flowers on them. And then they'll put a bunch out at once, set that fruit and then do that again. So a lot of peppers grow that way. Fun fact. in the way. Okay. 
to my poblanos. I don't know why they're small. I have a couple of I don't know if you guys can see this. I have a couple of habaneros in here. I'm just going to step in this bed a little bit. Look at those beautiful habaneros. So I also have a ton of cayenne peppers here that I need to harvest. camera's about to overheat, so I'm going to harvest a bunch more peppers, and then I'll show you guys what I get. And I'll let the camera cool off. Okay. have a little bit of daylight left, y'all, so I want to probably hear the kids. So I want to go ahead and finish these peppers. I just want to show you guys. Okay, I harvested the Marconis. Oh, no, I didn't. I did not get them all. So these are the Marconi peppers. They are sweet pepper. They are really delicious. And these plants just grow so many peppers. That's why once I planted them one year, now I grow them. I'll grow them forever. <laughs> Orange juice sweet, lunchbox snacking pepper. I'm gonna use these in a salad tonight. And here we have the Cubanelles, these lighter green ones. Usually they're longer than this. I'm not understanding why they're so short, but I'm just gonna blame the heat. It's kinda of odd. There we go. Here's a cubanelle that's gotten nice and long. I'm gonna go over to the other side and see if I find any health, California Wonder Bells. I almost missed this Armenian cucumber here. Look at this thing. He's gigantic. Look at that guy. And I have 
some field peas to plant. I planted out this entire bed of field peas and very few of them come up, came up. I checked the packet and the germination rate on one of them was like 75%, on the other was 80%. So I definitely should have gotten better germination than I did. Um, I don't know if maybe I didn't keep them moist enough because it's been in the hundreds and so I know this bed has been drying out. Um, the grass that was growing in this bed that I pulled up most of it, it is like back with the vengeance. So maybe some of that choked out some of my small plants. I'm not sure, but I want field peas. So I need to get this planted. So I have some seeds ready and I'm gonna plant those today as well. That's enough of that. Pulled up as much grass as I feel like pulling up. Now I'm gonna plant them, but I see some of the, I can see some of the beans that I planted. And here's some of those peas. I think maybe I just didn't water them enough. Um, so I think I'll have to water this bed every day instead of every other day, like my other raised beds, um, so that they don't dry out before those beans get established. So this is one of the beds that I'm going to spray with the spinosad because of the ants. Um, so before I do that, I do have some peas I need to harvest. I saw a grasshopper in here, so I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. As soon as my husband finishes eating, he's going to have to come out here and get it for me. But for now, I'm going to harvest these peas.
Also, I'm gonna take care of some pests. I have a lot of fire ants, not fire ants, like just ants, um, in my garden in a few different places. So I have some spinosad, which is an organic pesticide that works on a lot of different pests, but it does work on ants, supposedly. I haven't tried it before, but I'm gonna try that in my field pea bed and on my green beans. I have some other pests, like I have cucumber beetles, things like that, um, squash bugs, but I don't wanna spray my cucumber watermelon area because that's one of the parts of the garden that the bees love the most. The bees don't really spend a lot of time on the beans um, at all. Like I pretty much never see bees on my green beans or my field peas. So I'm not too worried about using a pesticide there. And also this pesticide only works while it's wet. And so it's the evening, the bees aren't really out now. Um, once it dries, it's safe. But I don't wanna chance it on my cucumber and watermelon, things like that, because I just don't wanna kill any bees. Um, but I wanna see if I can take care of these ants. Um, that are plaguing those areas where now they're crawling all over my beans and things like that. So now I'm going to make the pesticide spray. This is the spinosad that I'm using. It takes about a quarter cup per gallon. This is a one gallon sprayer that I have here. So I'm going to mix this up. Now the measuring cup I have here is half a cup. It's the one I use for my fertilizer, which I need to wash. but. This will do. I'm not going to bring out one of my indoor ones. So I can estimate about half of that. Okay, so now I'm going to fill up this sprayer with water. Or fill it to the one gallon line. That's my camera angle. All right, let's see it in action. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope you found the content helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that like button. You made it this far. You obviously liked it, right? And of course, for more gardening content, subscribe to my channel. Both of those things really help the channel grow and get out to more gardeners, which I would greatly appreciate. And of course, hit that notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. And of course, until we meet again, have a great one. Bye.